everyone welcome welcome to our international guests i first met sapna through fikki most ladies in fikki are smart suave sophisticated women of substance and independent but the what in, impressed me most the s which impressed me most about sapna was her sanskriti bhartiya sanskriti she is very much into uh, our indian culture and heritage and her journey started after her marriage she got married at a very young age so she could not complete her college she was in zavier's college and uh, i think in our generation that time our parents focus was only to get us married i remember even my father was very keen the minute i joined first year that you know get her married but thank god they didn't find a suitable boy so i could complete my college <laughs> but not sapna she has been living in a joint family for so many years but marriage did not deter her in 1994 she had a most traumatic experience where she and her family were held at gun point she managed to save 15 members of her family her actions were highly applauded and her bravery was highlighted in the newspapers but this experience left her in extreme pain and depression she saw she sought solace in our scriptures and with the guidance of able gurus she soon pursued her studies of the vedas upanishads and the bhagavad gita the student soon became a master and now she has become a thought leader and in indic cultural revivalist of our ancient heritage and a powerful speaker she is also the author of a self help non fiction amazon best seller book unleash the shakti within her talks on our glorious vedic heritage have been highlight highly inspirational and motivational she is a successful entrepreneur for the last 30 years specializing in our favorite you know jewelry we all love jewelry <laughs> Redo Jewelry is the brand, and they restore, renew, and redesign your old jewelry, making a beautiful piece even more beautiful. Our glorious, she is saddened by the fact that the younger generation is drifting towards Western wear, and forgetting the glorious sari. She has created a group India Sari Challenge on Facebook to encourage our Bharatiya Nari's to wear saris. This group also has twenty five over twenty five thousand members. She is also the founder of Devdutti Foundation, a well-known socio-cultural organization to empower urban women through various online and offline activities. Her motto has been to be a role model, lead by example. So I'm very, very happy and proud to present Sapna, and we look forward to a very interesting and exciting lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Lata. Thank you for the kind words. thank you i highly appreciate whatever you've said uh, some true some a little uh, uh, one second uh, yeah okay i'm just going to put my mic on all true all true <laughs> i'm just going to put my mic on i will not be able to hear you guys and you'll have to probably give me some kind of a sign if you want to get something across to me all right i'm going to mute everybody and uh, sapna ji you please then unmute yourself okay yeah. okay Okay, so here uh, we go, women. Uh, such beautiful ladies across the spectrum. I'm getting to see on my screen, and uh, today I'm going to take you on a roller coaster ride, and uh, where we will go through the colonial period, and then we will go the pre-colonial period, and then we will come to what we are right now, and how it will all fit in together seamlessly. you will see at the end of the at, at the end of the presentation it's going to be around a 45 minute presentation and i'll have about 5 to 10 minutes if at all you have any questions to ask and uh, we'll do the needful then yeah all right so since times immemorial people have been wanting to come to india people have been hearing about this glorious land called india with with ancient riches untold riches and an ancient glorious heritage and people all over the world so now in 1493 we had a papal bull and in that papal bull there was this doctrine of discovery given out and in that doctrine of discovery it was said that spain and portugal can divide between themselves and whichever land whichever the land they discover will be theirs all right so it, the era is 1493 there's been a papal bull and there is this doctrine of discovery christopher columbus is out to set out 
to find what? Even in 1493, the term India was there. He is set out to find India. Now that is another story that he happens to go eight to 10,000 miles away from India. And in the process, he discovers America. Yes, you got it right. He was out to discover India, but he veered that side and he discovered America. And so between Spain and Portugal, and so there, were, there was a long list of people who've been wanting to come to our shores for those untold riches, for that, for that culture, for that spirituality, for, for that which fascinated them. But then after a succession of uh, people who've been wanting to come here, we had the English, we had the English and they came and they colonized us. Now, when, when I talk about a colony, what does it mean? And when I talk about discovery, what, is, what does it mean? Does it mean that before discovery, we, we did not exist? Does it mean that before discovery, America was not? Or does it mean before discovery, we were not? We were, and we've been a long ancient civilization. But how this ancient civilization of ours has come across is what we are here to see. So I'm going to now start my screen share. And within this screen share, I have built this entire journey. And it's a beautiful visual journey. And that journey will take you across the spectrum I just mentioned. So just give me a, uh, once I share my screen, uh, ladies, just let me know that it's visible. Uh, is my screen visible? All right. OK. Yes. So uh, Vedic footprints across the world, yeah? And when we say, I've just spoken about this doctrine of discovery. And before I, uh, 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 before I actually take you on this doctrine, uh, on this slide share, I need to also share one more thing. We had our Lord Macaulay who had in this very land made a doctrine or he had made his minutes. And in that there were three essential things. And those things were that the people of India are going to soon forget their language which has become so true. They're conversing in English. We think in English, we talk in English, all right? And they would forget their English. Apni bhasha mein do sentences bhi dhang se nahi bol paenge. The second was that this land of brown Englishmen would not remember, would not know their Vedas or their Ramayanas or the Mahabharata or all the scriptures. We would be very away from them. We would not know them. We would know of them, but we would not, we would know nothing about them. The third was we, we would not know our dressing, our food habits, our the entire so-called culture. We would be slowly alienated. See, when you talk about it from their point of view, they, a small nation, had to colonize and rule this huge nation. So they had to do it with their own parameters. So that's the parameters that they, they set, set out to do. But within those parameters, what happened? An entire generations of us Indians have gotten extremely away from our own culture, from our own roots, from our own Indic identity. And this is what we're here to now capture. This is what we are here to first understand what it was all about. And from there on, take pride in it and then grab it with both our hands and then move in a different direction. I'm going to share the screen again. Give me a second. Okay, so this was the Macaulay minutes that I just spoke about and we've already done that. Uh, give me a second again. Okay, now this was what India looked like in the, in, in the times when the the British was here. This is a map of British India. As you can see, how smaller we've become from that time. Yeah. Okay. And I've also spoken about this, that we've been the longest ancient indigenous civilization in the world. And most of the ancient civilizations are now in museums. We are the only one which is existing, which is alive and which is kicking. Okay. And this is what the Vedic culture was all about. What are Vedas? Now, Vedas are the oldest texts known to humankind. And they have poems. They have hymns in, that, in them, which are dedicated towards nature. So our rishis of yore, our scientists of yore, in their wisdom, into it a certain hymn. And they, that, that were given out to please the gods so that the gods could favor us. And this was an arrangement made, made between the human beings and the God. 
So what happens was, as I just said, the entire history which was told to us, we were told that we are Aryans. We were told that we've come from somewhere else. We were told that this land called India does not belong to us. This Bharat Vash, it does not belong to us. But apparently, when you go back to your text, when you go back to the Ramayana or the Mahabharata, and then you read the entire history, and then you're awestruck. We were also told that this is a civilization which never attacked anyone, which has never gone out and colonized or captured. But that's not true. Arjuna in the Mahabharata had actually gone out. Arjuna had gone to many, many lands the world over, and he had made those kings the vassals and he had made them and they used to collect taxes. And this is how they were do, be able to do all the Ashwamedha Yagya and the Rajasu Yagya. Similarly, in the Ramayana times, when uh, Rama's coronation is being held or when uh, Dashratha is, uh, want, wants to appoint Rama as his uh, successor, the entire world over we had kings coming and giving gifts to our own people, to our own kings. So in the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, we see that all the rivers mentioned from that time are still there. In, uh, we, we see that all the territories mentioned in the, uh, in the, one second, my screen is not somehow working. Okay, so all the uh, territories mentioned, all the people mentioned the Ramayana and the Vedas are the oldest texts of, the mankind, uh, of mankind. The Ramayana and the Mahabharata are again, are again the oldest texts, the oldest poems, one of the oldest poems in the world. And all the names mentioned in the Ramayana still exist. We have Saurashtra, we have Gujarat, we have Kerala. We have the point that I'm trying to drive across is whatever is mentioned in our texts, is still existing. Same goes for the rivers. The rivers that the way to are still here. Gange cha yamune chaiva, Godavari Saraswati, Narmade Sindhu Kaveri, Jalesmin Sannidhin Kuru. That means the, there is Ganga, there is Yamuna, Godavari is still flowing. Saraswati is this lost river called the Saraswati has been identified by scientists from the NASA. There's a whole body of research done on it. So they've identified the ancient uh, map of Saraswati. They've identif identified the river. We have the Narmada, we have the Sindhu, we have the Kaveri. We have all the rivers, all the geographical rivers of the ancient times are still here. All the uh, ancient lands are still there. Now, you know, why was India known for? Why did people the world over want to come to India? Why was India known as a Sone ki Chiriya? Because we were a very prosperous nation. We were so prosperous, we, and we were prosperous when the Europe was not. We've been prosperous since that time. Europeans have been covered in ice ages, yeah? So when the ice has been on this side of the entire uh, hemisphere, India was, and we had trade routes established. We were the foremost in astronomy. We were the foremost in navigation. We were the foremost in boat building skills, in astrology in trading and like this is the map if you all can see let me just highlight my cursor and this is what the trade routes were then so when i talk about the vedic footprints the world over this is what you're going to see you're going to see our footprints in baghdad in persia in arabia you're going to see our footprints in africa you're going to see our footprints in china you're going to see our footprints in south america in america in denmark in Britain, this is what it's going to do. It's going to like open your vision. Oh my God. This is what Vedic footprints have been because we were the, we the earliest. I mean, can people please mute? Okay. So this is what's going to happen once when once we finish this journey of today of about 40 minutes, you're going to see this Vedic footprints all over because we were the foremost in everything possible. And this is are uh, the trading routes that were. Okay, so when we talk about the Indic civilization, people have heard of the Mohenjo-Daro and people have heard of Harappa and people have heard about Indus, Indus Valley civilization. Now, what has happened is these civilizations are treated as separate, but this Indus Valley civilization is what 
Vedic civilization was. And in that, I'm going to show you all kinds of signs, all kinds of uh, uh, linkages which join and link the civilization of Indus times to the present. This continuity, this long continuity, and this is going to, it's, 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 it's like this is a seal which they found in Harappa. And this is a boat. Can you see? A proper formed boat. And again, this, uh, and the next slide will take you to where our ports were. Okay, before I take you to that, Sanskrit has, is the mother of all languages. Linguists the world over, over have done immense studies to establish the, the protocol to establish a language called PIE or, or a Proto-Indo-European -Indo or a Proto this or a Proto that or a Proto this. But Sanskrit is the mother of all languages. The entire search was to make Sanskrit as one of the sister languages. They did not want Sanskrit to become the mother language, which it is. And once we see that in 400 languages across the world, Sanskrit, 400 languages across the world have many, many, many words from Sanskrit. Now this, the slide that has just come up is the immense number of words in Russian from the Sanskrit, or like you can see the Avestan and the Greek and their meanings and the Sanskrit term, terminology or the English or especially the Slavic languages, the Lithuanian and the Slovenian. And these languages are immensely connected to Sanskrit, immensely. I can take a whole session on just the language part. Okay, so now we have the port which I was talking about, the in Indus Valley ports. And uh, like this is a port which they have actually found on ex excavation. This top part is how it looks like today. This is Lothal, and this is a recreation, a recreated image of what the port might have been. So this is an inland port. So this, as you can see, this is how they used to make an inland port. And this is how the boats were in a, again on the seals, again in the, uh, in the carvings, you can have a look at, at all the Indus Valley boats of those times. Okay, now the cultural continuity, which I've been telling you about. Now, can you see this woman wearing the bindi? Bindi, and can you see me? I'm wearing the same bindi. For thousands of years, we've had this cultural continuity. Can you see the women wearing bangles? These are all found, these are all artifacts belonging to the, the Harappa, the Mohenjadaro, and all the Saraswati Valley sites. Can you see me wearing so many bangles? Yeah. And can you see this? There, there is this beautiful sculpture who's wearing a waist belt, and many women down the ages, even now, wear these waist belts. Can you see uh, this woman wearing payal here? Here, if you can follow my cursor. And women even now wear this payal. Okay, and uh, can you see this? This is the seal that they have found out. They have found many seals of, this is Lord Pashupati Nath. Shivji bhi inhi ka ek roop hai. And he is the Lord of all the animals and we still pray to this figure. We still pray to this God. And this is a goddess. This is goddess Durga. Ye tiger hai or ye goddess Durga hai. Par hum inki ab bhi puja karte hai. And this is swastikas which are found the world over. All these are artifacts found in the Mohenjo-daro and the Harappa and all the Saraswati Valley civilization sites. This is a yoga mudra of Namaste, which has become very popular. And this are the bathing, bathing ghats. Now these bathing ghats are again of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. And can you see how thousands of years ago, how well developed and how scientifically and how the beauty of it. And these are the Vedic Havan Kundas. Hum aaj bhi puja isi paddhati se karte hain. Ye hamar Havan Samadri abhi bhi rakhi hui hai vahaan pe for those many centuries. And this is how the Havan Kundas are. So the point I'm trying to establish is the long indigenous cultural continuity of our civilization from that times to now. The rest of the ancient civilizations have ended up in museums. There is a Rome, but there is no Roman civilization. There is Greece, but there is no Greek civilization. There is Iraq and Iran and Syria, but there's no Mesopotamian Mesopotamian civilization. There is no uh, Babylonian civilization. 
there is no Hittite, there are no Minuan, there are no Aztec, there are no Inca civilization. All the civilizations the world over are extinct and are found in the museums. This is the only civilization surviving, kicking, healthy, aiming and going all out to become the Vishwa Gurus that we once were. So now I'm going to take you towards what was at the east of us, where I keep telling you, you will see signs the world over. And in Indonesia, if you see, the emblem of Indonesia is a Garuda, and it is Sanskrit mein likha hai, bhinne ka tungala ika. Central Java ka emblem hai, shakti bhakti praja. In one of the provinces, the emblem is Yogyakarta. In another province, the yo, yo, uh, emblem is Dharma, Bijak, Sena, uh, Shama. So these are the yo, these are all derived from India, from this Bharat Varsha. All the gods in Thailand come from us, come from here. Okay. So the next I take you to is in Cambodia, the footprints of uh, our footprints in Cambodia are all over. Cambodia used to be called Cambodia. The land called Cambodia is in the Mahabharata, it is in the Ramayana, it is mentioned in the various Puranas, and we have all sorts of cultural uh, in, uh, affinity, cultural continuity with the Cambodians to the extent that their, their nine devas come from us. This is the Surya on a chariot, this is the Chandra moon, this is Shiva on a bull, this is Varuna on a crocodile. Indra on an elephant, Kubera on a horse, Hamare yaha, har god ka apna ek vahan hota hai. Every, like we uh, drive in our own cars or we have other vehicles. Similarly, our gods all have a vehicle which is unique to them. So this is Rahu on a cloud and Ketu on a lion. So this is our footprints in Cambodia. Okay. All right, so this is now I'm taking you to Vietnam, I'm taking you to Java, I'm taking you to Bali, and our footprints over there, our footprints over there are again the various gods. The many, many gods are apart from the culture, apart from the food habits, apart from the language, apart from the, the, the much, uh, the affinity, because our culture and not just our cultural reef, uh, cultural reach, we extended right till there. So we, here in India, we have Dikpalas. We have gods of all the directions. Like when I say, want to hear something, I do that, don't I? So Southeast and East and all the different directions have been assigned a particular God. And similarly in Vietnam, in Java, in Bali, they have all directions have various gods. Okay, now Australia, and how do the Australians say? They, they say Australia. If I remember right from one of my trips, is how the Australians, like we call them Australians, but they say Australia, Australia, something like that. In any case, in the, in the Ramayana, in the Valmiki Ramayana, we have this word, we have this continent, which is called the Shalmali Dvipa, the oldest, the oldest trees, Shalmari trees are found there. And in that is mentioned that that continent used to be where the Aryans, where we used to deposit all our weapons. It is used to be called the Astralaya. Astra is the weapons and Astralaya. That's why Australia on as a whole continent is very much a big, a huge desert where inhabitation is not possible because they say the radioactivity and everything else is still happening, is what is being still said. And how did the Indians go or the Africans through India go to all the way to Australia? So they say the first migrants went to Australia, they left Africa, they came to India through Arab, Arabia and Asia, and this is how they reached Australia. And a second wave has gone about, say about 5,000 years ago. And in the Mahabharat, when the war ends and when all the tribes are going out, then also few tribes from India have gone and settled in Australia. And can you see, this is a bushman from Australia. And can you see this gold, you tilak, a tilak with a you, which most Indians would know, which our Brahmins and our Pandits wear. This is a you tilak. 
तिलक है जो यू करके है कहते हैं छापा इट्स कॉल चंदन का तिलक दे पुट इट ओवर दैट ओके सो आवर फुटप्रिंट्स इन न्यूजीलैंड क्वींसलैंड इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया अगेन एंड व्हाट इज व्हाट आर दीस नाउ दिस इज व्हाट दे हैव फाउंड दे हैव फाउंड दिस in their excavation they are finding this wherever they dig wherever they want to make new things wherever things are happening these ye sari nikal rahi hai andar se so this is a god they have discovered this is our ganesha they have discovered in a jimpi in jim at this they call the jimpi ape this is our hanuman ji this is a, the, a, a statue of our goddess durga she is in a padmasan position position and all these have been found in the jimpi islands in new zealand in queensland and australia all right so after that i am taking you to a tour on peru in south america there is a huge footprint in south america in many 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 separate countries because now they are separate countries earlier it was one whole big mass and it is huge the kind of footprints there now this is astonishing this is a huge huge petroglyph it's called it's called a geoglyph if you can see this see over here and if you can if you can visualize this this is what they call it they call it the paracas trident but in once if you go there and you ask the locals what is this they do not know but in our valmiki ramayana there are sutras which mention what this is in the valmiki ramayana in the in one of the kandas in one of the chapters there is this tridasheshwaraha there is this trishira they call it the trishira kanchana on a golden mountain and this was said to be a marker for the gods that they reach the furthest on this side so this is what and if you look at it the way it's designed the way it is made this design is cut two feet into the soil so one feet like like say about you know uh, 12 and 12 24 inches into the soil and for thousands of years it stayed just like that and if you can follow my cursor again uh okay my this is a vedika this is a vedi bhumi this uh, a rectangular bhumi and this again is mentioned in the valmiki ramayan verse jat rupamai divya virajita sa vedika tasya koti divam sprishta shat yojanam ayata this means that this is so huge that from hundreds of miles into the sea this mountain and this trishira kanjana is still visible it is so huge this geoglyph the locals do not know but our valmiki ramayana knows what it was and this is our footprint in peru okay something to like what is happening in peru the nazca lines something similar is in india now this again is in peru and this is a monkey this if you can follow my cursor this is a monkey's tail and this is a monkey a huge monkey this is peru but this is india this is konkan this is ratnagiri in ratnagiri they have found in konkan they have found huge petroglyphs now this brings our civilization to at least at least 75000 to a lakh of years old which people the world over refuse to believe because according to everybody since christianity began we are just 1000 2000 years before christianity not more but as proofs the world over are coming out as the uh, as things are being unearthed all over the world the datings have to go further back and people have to realize that sanatan dharma and india is the mother of all civilizations this is where life originated and this is where from where from where life has gone out this is an out of india theory not an aryan invasion where people are coming into india and bringing the culture here no that this fascinating culture has to be indigenous now this again is footprints in peru in peru people who know hanuman will know that this is hanuman one doesn't even have to say anything because it is hanuman and again in peru they are finding all these vedic ved bhumis ye itni badi badi ved bhumi ved jahan pe yagya hote hain 
is all in Peru. And they have also found these jars or these urns which have our typical swastika sign. So this is all Peru, which is India se thousands and thousands of kilometers. Hai. Now again, in Guatemala. In Central America, in Guatemala, what are our footprints? Now this is, this is now in one of the museums. Now this is what they call the hero twins of Popul Vuyo is what I am one of the local people. Now this story has a remarkable likeness to Lavenkush. Ye Lavenkush hai. This is Sri Ram. This is uh, Bharat, Shatrughan and Lakshman. And this is the entire Vanar Sena. This Vanar Sena is all sitting for Ram's coronation. But now this has become a local tradition, a local folklore, and they have given it some other name. But our Ram's footprints are in Central America. Okay, so now I've already taken you to a journey of the east of ancient Bharat Varsha. Now I'm going to take you to the west of ancient Bharat Varsha. When we go to the west of ancient Bharat Varsha, we come, we see in Turkey. And what do we see? In Turkey, now, which is now an Islamic nation, but in, in Turkey or this Gobikli Tepe, there is this huge carvings onto the rock faces, onto the mountains. And these are our 12 Adityas. Hamare ha Surya ko bara Aditya, one for every month, there is a specific Aditya. And this, we pray to one Aditya in a month. And this is carved in Turkey. And the next is going to be our footprints in Syria. There is this ancient temple of Baal Shamin. Now this is a huge temple. Unfortunately, because of the political problems in Syria, they are just blowing up all these monuments and they're leaving, they're leaving nothing. But that's the way of the world. We can't do much. What is, is. Now our footprints in Mesopotamia, in Iraq, in Turkey, in Syria, in Iran. Now this, all of us would know that this is Ram, this is Lakshman, this is Sita. Or we can Krishna, Balram and Subhadra. This is in Syria. Mein mile hai. This has been found in Syria. Now, in one of the, um, in, in Marshall area in Khorasan in Iran, in one of the mosques, there is this huge paintings on the ceiling. And here, there is a little Vishnu here, holding a conch. I could not get a better resolution picture, holding a conch. Shankar Padma Gada Chakra. This is a small Vishnu. Where is it sitting in Padma Sun? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? In Iran. Okay. Now, the, again, the footprints. Now, this has been found where? In Turkey. In Turkey, this huge, this, this uh, uh, artifact came out. And this is our Brahmin with a Shikha. And this is a flying Hanuman in a museum in Brazil. These are all, this is an Indian turban, a Rajasthani turban. All these artifacts, this, and these are footprints. In India, we pray to footprints, to the goddesses footprints. Now this is in a temple in Syria. And they call it the mysterious footprints of Ainadara. Now our, we have a goddess called Nainatara. And over time, how Nainatara became Ainadara is a study for linguists. They have explained the etymology. Now in Nimrud, Anatolia, Turkey, we have the Mitra civilization and we have, uh, we have various monuments we have, which bring our, those, that culture to our Vedic texts where Mitra is mentioned, where Indra is mentioned, where Varun is mentioned. And in, a, and in the same chronology, they have their gods over there. The same chronology, which is mentioned in mentioned Veda, similar chronology they have in Anatolia, in Turkey, in the Mitra. Okay, now this is something astonishing. This is in on the Iran-Iraq border on a huge face clip. And what do we see over there? We see, we see Ram, we see holding a bow, an arrow, we see Sugriva, and we see Sugriva, and we see Hanuman. And this is a rep, uh, uh, rendering that the, that the uh, artist has done. So ye hai Ram with his bow and arrow, and this is Hanuman, and this is Sugri pleading Ram to let go of him and uh, after the death of Bali. Ye hai, uh, uh, Iran mein. And now the our footprints in Egypt, Iraq, and Armenia. And what do we see? 
we see this is in, in Armenia. And can you see this swastik here? This is a swastik in Armenia. This was a tile that they discovered where? They discovered in Egypt. And in Egypt, can you see this is Ram holding a bow and arrow, Sita and Lakshman. And there they call him Amunra, Khonsu and Muth, who's the wife of, uh, wife of Amun. And again, this is again the same gods, the same gods linking our Vedic civilization to the Egyptian civilization. Okay, so and now Denmark. And how, do, how did we end up in Denmark too? We will be in Britain too. I'm going to take you there as well. Now, this is something that this, it, it, this is a world famous, this, this uh, uh, what, what, they, what do they call it? They call it the cauldron. They call it the Gundestrup. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but they call it the Gundestrup cauldron. It is supposed, perhaps the world's most famous silver bowl. They have found Gaja Lakshmi. They have found a, a Lakshmi kind of figure and they have found two elephants which are, which are standing. And in Denmark, they've never had elephants, believe me. They don't even know what an elephant is all about. And then they have found a god looking like, oh, like a Shiva who's holding serpents. And they have found which we saw in the Indus Valley civilization. They have found that. And in Germany, what else they find? They, in Germany, they have found half man, half lion figure, and Hamare jo nursing avatar hai, that is a half man, half lion figure. I'm taking you very quickly because it's a huge body of work that I've accumulated. Okay, now this is a bath in Britain. Bath is one of the most famous sites of Britain where most tourists go. And in Bath in Britain, there are many, many figures drawn. Again, this is from the uh, from Denmark, the Celtic connection. Can you see the sun? And there's a story in our Vedic Veda, how, the, how Indra stole the wheel of sun god Surya, how he got annoyed, and what all happened next. And that is also mentioned in the Celtic lores of Denmark. So in England, in Celtic lores in Denmark are our civilizations, are, are the footprints of our civilization. Now, again, I'm taking you to Iran. In Iran, there is a huge Mount Chakravan. Mount Chakravan is mentioned in the Ramayana. Or in, uh, in uh, Iran, they call it the Firuzabad. It's called the city now called the Firuzabad. Earlier it was Shahre Gaur, and this is a this is made in it's a big, big, huge thing. And in that, the, in the four quadrangles, they have uh, the gate of Ardashir in the south, the Mitra in the east. The Mitra god is mentioned in our Rigvedas and Behram and Hormuz. So the Indo-Iranian, the Persians. And now this again is one of the pictures of how Vedic cities used to be designed and how this Shehre Gaur is exactly like a Vedic. Afghanistan, I don't need to go much into because Afghanistan, mainly people we know about 150 years ago, it was India and it was Afghanistan, which became Afghanistan and our uh, in the, Ramay, uh, the Mahabharat, our Kunti and our Madri, they all come from this area. So again, in Afghanistan, they are finding all sorts of, like this Ganesha was found, there's this huge temples, the Bamiya Buddhas, there's a lot of destruction happening in that area. In Lebanon, what our civilization says, now this is again a huge door. Can you see, if you can see the, follow the human being over here. So can you see the scale of this huge uh, complex? is just act like our Indian temple. And here share ke muh bane hai, lotuses hai. So children in Lebanon schools are taught that Indian craftsmen, Indian elephants, sculptors, and yogis came to construct that. But Indians don't know about it. And similarly, there are lotus flowers which are hanging. Uh, so basically, this brings the our civilization in Lebanon. Our, and this is astonishing. This is Petra, Jordan, and Bharat Varsha. Now, if I were to ask you which is India and which is Petra, you wouldn't know. Even I get confused. Is this India or this is Petra? Or this is Petra or this is India? Well, this is the Ajanta Caves in India, and this is in Petra. This is in Petra. And Vahipe, the, our, our, there are in Ram, uh, Ramayan, ka, Ram ka footprints here. And there is this Jabal Ram. The, the entire mountain is called Jabal Ram. And there are many, many Ramayana lores in that area. 
many, many lords. This is the Jabal Ram, they call it the peak. This is again a deity in Padmasan posture. It found in one of the temples. These are again the elephant, uh, that elephant tusks, if you can see. And these are the lotuses, which are never found in the desert areas, which are Indian of our origin. And we have that three female deities, Aludza, Alat, and Manad and Dushira, which will be in the next slide, are all Vedic goddesses. The temple of Dushiras. Now this again is shocking, but you would not know which is India, you would not know which is Petra. You would not know this is in Petra. This is a shivaling in Petra. And they call it something else. Uh, uh, it'll come in the next slide. Uh, they call it a bitai. Uh, like how we call it a linga. A linga does not mean a phallic organ. A linga is a symbol for the that divine. Now they call it a betil or a bitail. I don't know what it, exactly it's called. But now this is Petra and this is Hampi Karnataka. Okay, in Palmyra, in Syria, there are huge temples, huge, uh, big buildings, and this is what they have found in Palmyra, in Syria. This is exactly like what our Devi Durga, who rides the tiger, who, who rides the tiger is. Okay, now Encyclopedia Britannica mentions Etruria and Etruscan were civilizations which were in the northern of Italy, which was known as Etruria at that time. Now in that Etruria, in that region, shivlings have been excavated. And this is the wall, the paintings on the walls that they have found out. To the extent that it is said that Rome was established by Ram, this is what who we pray to even now after centuries. And this is what was painted in the famous Campana plaque from Caeria, how, uh, 50 kilometers away from Rome. There are many, many excavated houses which have paintings based on the Ramayana. Huge houses, huge paintings, and there are many artifacts. There are, now this again is a Ram uh, uh, figures. Can you see? These are again paintings in the houses in Rome, in ancient Italian homes which have been excavated. The Dashratha legend, this is Dashrat, and these are two of his wives when they could not have a baby, they had gone for a haven, and this is the medicine that was given to them. So the museum pieces say, there are descriptions over there. Okay, now Lava and Kush. Now these are again paintings which are found in Italian homes. This is our Lava and Kush after the Ashwamedha Yagya. Now this, the people we are in Devdhiti, we are doing the Valmiki Ramayan, and this is Bali, this is Sugriva, this is Tara, they're all Vanaras with their tails. And these are all artifacts that are found in Rome at the moment. Now this is again in Italy. This is right now in the Louvre Museum. In the Louvre Museum, and this, can you see this artifact here? This is uh, our Indian temple, and this is a shivling. And similar shivling with the snake is here, but they tell us it's not a shivling. Can you imagine? They tell us it's not a shivling. If you can see this, this is the bull, the Nandi. You can follow this. This is a Nandi face. This is the Shiv and the Parvati, like how Shiv and the Parvati are sitting. But this is dressed for Western time, Western location. And now this again is the moon, how Shiva, uh, Shiva always has the, top, the moon on his forehead. Ladies, let me know if you're getting bored. I can stop whenever you want me to. Now, this is the goddess ICC of Egypt, broke Greek Romans. Our, yeah. You want me to stop? Is anybody saying something? No, please go ahead. Okay, all right. Now this, one second, uh, let me just get back my slide, the previous one. Uh, how do I get that? One second. Okay, so now this slide is, uh, uh, this is our goddess Durga who, who writes Good. Now, this is of the Egypt, the Greeks, the Romans. This was a goddess who they call ICC. And again, she has, can you see, two snakes. And this is the minimum symbol 
population. And best part is the this goddess migrated from Crete to Europe, which is in the Paris area. This became the Paris because of this. And the Persians also who went from that area and migrated, they, become, they became the Persians. So this is the civilization, the Vedic footprints over there. Now, again, this is in the museum. These, these are pre-Islamic Saudi Arabia goddesses. Now, again, if you can see, can you see this uh, figure? It's just like our goddess Saraswati, who rides a swan. This is a swan, swan. So this is our goddess Saraswati. This is our goddess Durga, right? A tiger. This is, so there, these were gods which were prayed to before it got overtaken by entire uh, different religion. So Allah, al Al-Manat in Damascus, in Syria, Turkey, Iran, Jordan, all over, all over. So this is the trinity of the goddesses and this is the trinity of our goddesses. This is our uh, Saraswati and our, uh, uh, the Durga, the Lakshmi and the Saraswati. And this is exactly similar tiger. All the three goddesses are riding, are sitting. Are, uh, I can hear some sound from somewhere. I request you to mute. Request you to please mute. Okay, so now Shiv and Shakti, Shiv and Parvati. Shiv and Parvati were all over. So this place is still called Shivata. Shivata is a place, it's, it's ruins in Israel and there are many, many gods. Many of our gods have been found there. And uh, one second, yeah. These are the temples which have been found and this is uh, in the excavations, they are finding lotuses, they're finding gods, they're finding all kinds of images. Okay, now I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna now quickly wind up. This is the north of the ancient Bharat Varsha. Kailash, Mount Kailash is mentioned in the Ramayana. Mansarovar Lake is mentioned in the Ramayana. Uh, the, uh, there is this tunnel which they say Shiva's son, uh, Skanda, uh, he carved his way through the, these different, uh, difficult terrain and uh, he is still prayed to in that region in China. In China and Mongolia, they are finding uh, Shiva idols, they are finding Vishnu idols, they are finding Apsaras in the caves, they are finding Gajendra Moksha, they are finding Pashupatinath. They are finding, and in, in because China, uh, India has been the teacher for uh, the world, and especially the Chinese, because Chinese, uh, this is the, in the Kwanzhou Museum. This is a Shiva in the Kwanzhou Museum, Vishnu, Shiva, Durga, Devi. And in Siberia, they still pray, pray to a God called the Ayu Devata. As we all know, Ayu means life. Now, India was China's guru. It has been, these are done in the caves. China never had any elephants. This is what has been done in the Chinese caves. India sent mission. <laughs> okay. Now, ancient Vishnu idols found in the Russian towns. Whatever I am sharing here has been all identified, all sorts. This is the Russian symbol, this tube or two bird. This is from India. This is from Russia. This Vishnu has been found in Russia. This again, all these artifacts have been found in various beginnings, in various locations. So this is between Turkmenistan and Iran, and they are finding in the diggings cities exactly like what Harappa and Mohenjadaro and other Vedic Indus Valley civilization cities. Okay, in Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, in cave drawings, they have Indian gods, they have uh, the Rama and the Lakshmana with the bow and arrow and the tigers. In Tajikistan, it is unusual to see women doing the rituals of what we do even now. In the, in the nine days, twice a year, we pray to Goddess Durga, and so do these Tajik girls do. In Kyrgyzstan, they have this huge, can you see this Angarakha and the Dhoti? Can you see all these Indian men? And they tell us that this is not Indian, but something else. But this is all from the Indic lore. These are all from here. Russia, Siberia, Earth's oldest lake is Lake Baikal, where there are northern lights. And this finds mention in the Ramayana, Payasam Nidhi. Can you, do you know 350 rivers empty their waters into this Lake Baikal? And this is mentioned in the Ramayana too. This Siberian summer palace has been built by Krishna's descendants. Exactly something like this is what they have unearthed 
in dwarka which is under water in dwarka uh, 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 krishna built this city and this is has been a uh, image rendered this is a city with extreme fortification if you can see this is the this is the depth of the fortification so this city is called a vajrapura with a city with extreme fortifications and this is in siberia okay south of ancient russia i am actually rushing through it because valmiki ramayana in antarctica valmiki can you see this is a tent over here and can you can you know this huge mountain of ice and from there flows water just like blood absolutely blood it it looks as though blood is flowing in antarctica and this is mentioned in the ramayana that the 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 land that side is extremely difficult one cannot go on that side it is not livable it is called yamapuri it is called where people go after death this is all this is all antarctica where we have rivers of ice where we have everything to do with ice where it's uninhabitable where people people cannot live the vedic swastika and the civilizations the world over have the swastika symbol and so the living vedic civilizations uh, that we are and the rest of the civilizations are in the museums the aztec and the inca and the maya and the babylonian and the hittite and the mitanni and the sumerian and the words are similar dashratha kashipu in their language now this this is they, they call it the brahma and we know the four head god is brahma manu the singha dwar this is again in syria in hittusa they call it okay maya civilization now what does the uh, uh, the us ambassador to mexico say he says it's unquestionably hindu there is no doubt that it is not hindu all similarities between the temples of maya civilization now with this i end and with this i end and i come to give me a second with this i end and when i say the responsibility begins now because if you know that you are a world leader if you know that you've been the vishwa guru if you know that the if you embrace your vedic past and you know that what you've given to the world you've given entire culture knowledge astronomy you've taught the world oneness you've never fought with the world that way you've embraced all cultures you have known that uh, one and there are expressions are many and out of that many expressions there is oneness so but then there is responsibility then there is responsibility to, to conduct yourself in that manner there is responsibility to go back to your mahabharata to go back to your ramayana there is responsibility uh, responsibility to become the the vishwa guru that you once were to go back to your primary text to learn to follow that conduct in your daily lives and then give it out to your next generations and become the role models so with this i end my presentation and i open the floor for any question if you may have or if i have already exceeded my time i just have to rush through the whole whole presentation yes the floor is open can i say something for sure ashima yeah very uh, very nice talk and very stunning also तो इस जब आपने ये टॉपिक दिया तो एक दो चीजें मुझे भी थोड़ी समझ आई जैसे एटॉमिक एनर्जी जब फर्स्ट टाइम एटम बॉम्ब हमने फाइंड आउट किया अमेरिका में तो उनको लगा कि दिस इज ऑलरेडी डिस्क्राइब्ड इन उपनिष्ठा एंड रामाज ऑल वेपन्स वर मोर डेंजरस देन द एटम बॉम्ब्स एंड अगेन आई हैव हर्ड दैट बैंकॉक um the capital of uh, thailand was uh, ayodhya it's named after ayodhya so and ashima, uh, if i may ashima if i may this is a topic for another day so let's take up the topics which are relevant to the talk today and uh, uh, let's uh, yeah because that's the to entire topic is a separate topic we should do it another day okay. that's my request yeah i'm so going to invite vijay tadani ji please ask yes. your question hello a uh, very nice evening to everyone uh, vijay thadani this side uh, you uh, sapta ji you have given us a fantastic uh, not insight on vedic civilization everywhere in all around the world you forgot to mention that during the chol kingdom ice was imported from canada hudson's bay 
and there's a plaque there that says that that we were trading with the americas something like 800 to 1000 years back which is prior to this fellow coming to uh, magellan was it who came to india and the magellan actually followed one of our gujarati traders and in his diary he has mentioned that uh, his own boat is one quarter of the size of the indian boat yes Yes, it is. Yes. Thank you. A comment. Yes. yes. And I want to thank you for providing me with this extra information, which I did not have. You are welcome. I would like to have a, a, a. This has been recorded. I would like to have a recording, please. Sure. Sure. For sure. Yes. Uh, do we have any other question? Anju Pankaj, you had raised your hand. Just now I. Just wanted to admire the topic today she picked up as uh, others are saying we just wanted to add one thing only that what ashima mentioned in the, at the, uh, thailand there's a place called karabi where the linga puja was there we were just drove there to the sea in which the, there were lingas so this is true and one more this gandhar gandhar is a, actually was a gandhar where the gandhari came from Am I right, Sapnadi? Absolutely. Gandhar, yeah. Madri also came from Madhya Pradesh. So we have our yeah. Ramayana and the Mahabharata actually bring the geography together. So Ramayana and Mahabharata are the itihas of our land. Itihasa, that's how it happened. But unfortunately, the colonizers told us that this is all mythology. It is not mythology. This is what they wanted to do to get us away from our own glorious past so that the connection is severed and we do not have but this is what we have to now do we have to now gather ourselves together and go to our past and connect ourselves to our present and build a great future that's all our jobs now we all have to do that anybody else oh. Okay. i don't think we have any more questions uh, absolutely uh, one yeah. more thing I want to tell. Only uh, we have a question to ask, please, uh, to Sapnaji. Yeah, I want to ask that please. is it right Go or ahead. wrong? Go ahead. And Charan Paduka, which is described in uh, Ramayana, it is uh, said that in uh, Thailand, uh, Thailand or Malaysia, I, I don't, I am not clear about it. In Thailand or Malaysia, it is uh, now pronounced as Your Highness to the King. Is it right? I would not make a comment because I don't know about it. I would request you to study further and let me know it as well. <laughs> because everybody has to do their own study. We, we all have to put in our own homework, our own uh, and then make, a, make our own assessment because I am not aware of this point. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sapnaji. The journey that you have taken us, highlighting the Vedic footprints across the globe, uh, right from Australia, New Zealand, Cambodia, Java, Thailand, on the eastern side, and uh, all the way to South America, Peru, the West Asia, the Central Asia, so on and so forth. Uh, you have also effortlessly highlighted the cultural continuity in Indian culture and heritage uh, probably the only living ancient civilization, and it is seen through probably their uh, uh, worship rituals, the costume, the jewelry, and of course, foremost, the knowledge system. You've also highlighted the importance of Sanskrit language, how uh, most of the world languages have their origin based in Sanskrit. You've tried to establish the Indian gods, Rama, Durga, Shiva, Hanuman, and the likes. Uh, the icons have been excavated from various sites outside India and uh, venerated maybe under different names. Uh, in all, I would say, I think it was an interesting and very uh, consuming session, uh, maybe open for debate, uh, though many of the historians, especially uh, the world historians and Western historians, uh, may not agree with all the hypotheses or appropriation of gods and goddesses, but hey, uh, to each one his own. Absolutely. And that's all I can say. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know we normally have bharat darshan but we now we, today we've had international darshan thank you thanks a lot thank you very much uh, yeah i just wanted to say one thing that uh, to summarize you very clearly said yes the whole idea was to uh, in a way disintegrate our civilization and culture by trying to disprove all the theories that we have with us and i think it's high time that we try to consolidate and try to put things back where they belong and to correct history and geography in whichever way we can especially history thank you jay shri so, thank you thank you and thank you sapna it was a very very nice interesting and as uh, pavan said consuming and very informative session thank you so thank much. you all for joining sapna ji a big big thank you to you for such an enlightening session Thank you. Thank you, Sapna ji, for it was a very interesting and very informative session of yours. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Most welcome. Anybody have any question, or we may wind up? We are going to end the meeting okay, now. Perfect, yeah. perfect. 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 Thanks a lot. I would yeah. want to thank Lata. One second. One second. I would like to thank Lata for inviting me to this platform, and I uh, invite all you ladies. to take on this journey for yourself and now just with with a magic wand called the computer or your mobile you have the world at your feet to act, to access to explore to know which direction to go so we cannot blame our governments we cannot blame the colonizers we cannot blame our educators for not teaching us what we don't know it's our onus to learn to inculcate to build the conduct therein and become role models for next generation because the next gen do not listen to your words they see and they respond to the conduct that you do so this is my request my invitation to all you beautiful women out there come on take pride in your own vedic roots go out explore and grab it on thank you thanks a lot thank you